Matt Donald here, folks. Worst microphone alert, because my microphone I normally use to record this is currently still packed in luggage in my car from a trip I recently went on, and I need to get this out quickly, so the microphone from my webcam it is so very, very professional. And what am I going to do with this worst quality that gives new listeners their first impression of this wonderfully professional and sophisticated show. Well, I want you to subscribe to my Patreon, of course, at patreon.com slash matthewdonald, where we discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, sometimes in flimsy ways, sometimes in ways that are a bit of a stretch. And this month, it's the most wonderful time of year, not Christmas, hell no, not Christmas. It is time for our annual Pacific Rim episode, because the dinosaurs were implied to be kaiju in that universe, and that movie is so god dang awesome that I want to talk about it all the time with everyone every year, and that's what we do, so check that out, as well as uh, another episode about Jurassic World the Game on the phone. Uh, that'll come out soon. It was meant to come out last month, but, you know, pfft, life. Christmas! Holidays! You know, the holiday season. Hard time for everyone. Link is in the description before you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a good day! Hey, 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 hey. Roar, growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast that, like the Trilobites in the Permian, is due to die at any moment now. My name is Matthew Donald, and each week I have a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate Jesus' prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This this week I'm joined by someone who, like me, hopefully is not due to die at any moment now. We're both going to live long and healthy lives, us young'uns. <laughs> it's, it's Alan Brooks, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm also doing wonderful. It's a nice winter day uh, when we're recording here. Uh, we're, nice, we're all, of course, house. Uh, you're in... You're, you're in Washington, right? Yeah, or you I'm in, in Washington. You're in okay. Colorado, so... Yeah. The wonders of technology... Indeed. Oh, we, we're just record. Watch this. I was about to say, watch this. Eventually, we'll get it to the point where people can record podcasts where someone's on the Earth and someone's on the Moon. But actually, that wouldn't work because there'd always be at least a two second delay. <laughs> eh. Editing for the win. Yeah, well, Yay. I know, but you'd have to wait. You'd have to wait like two seconds each time to get the other person's response. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Which I guess, look, okay, that's doable. Mars, though, not doable. No. no. To- Mars is 15 to like 45 minutes. If you can even hear it, them. any Martian podcast must be done with both co-hosts on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Oh, uh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> I remember actually one time I was joking on this podcast with Laura. We were talking about how we were. I forgot how we got to this joke with this bit. We we're talking about how oh, we were recording from uh, Biodome in, on Mars. <laughs> it's like oh, we we've been here for seven years. It's we're getting, we're getting a bit of cabin fever here. I was saying, like, I tried to go on a date with this girl. It didn't work out, and I'm rapidly running out of options. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Because there's only, like, 50 of us here? <laughs> like, yeah. so, like, only good for a short period of time. Yeah, before you go a bit insane. It's yeah. like, but the biodome's great, and it apparently has a recording studio. <laughs> so, Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's always a fun topic about like if we ever get around to discovering. I wonder if we if it's proven to discover if if we have pro- if we eventually prove that there was life on Mars. Like we have fossils of it, obviously be extinct now. But if there was life on Mars, would it be fu- would it could I cover it on Paleobites? <laughs> How would you even write the species name for that? I don't know. But like it's a prehistoric animal, but no one said anything about Earth. So yeah, yeah. Astropaleontology, like astrobiology. So wow. That's a fun... That's a doctor- niche. Like, that's a niche study, period. Or astrobiology not- on its own is probably already a niche term, but apparently it exists. Astropaleontology. <laughs> Astropaleobiology or pastro- paleontology, yeah. Yeah. Man. Uh, well, nothing enough about that. We've got to have weird animals on Earth. Like, yeah. for example, Ambulocetus. <laughs> so... Yeah. Okay, true. Yeah, it did season. look fairly weird, though. So, there has seg- been weirder. Flawless segue. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it means walking whale, which makes sense. Amble, like ambling along. <laughs> so, Cetus for um, whale. Yes, of course. Uh, Tom is a cetacean, a group of artiodactyl mammals that includes dolphins and whales. Like this, this was a whale. At least this one swam a lot, unlike Pachycetus. And from what you were gathering, it might have swum constantly. <laughs> so, yeah. 
they're basically talking about some studies where they're thinking, could it actually have walked on land or were the... So was the walking whale actually not walking at all? <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of biologists where, quite frankly, uh -huh. uh, there are arguments everywhere. We're paleontologists especially because they have so little information to go on, but... Mm -hmm. Apparently, one of the things that they talk about in biology is if you're wondering why everything seems so confusing, it's because everyone is constantly trying to puzzle things together into these artificial boxes of how right. do well, we it's like boxes. things. It's, it's like constantly doing a, working on a puzzle that we will never have all the pieces for, which sounds like the most frustrating thing in the world. <laughs> and all the pieces so. are like multidimensional and... You may find that some of the pieces you may yeah. think go here have chain not change well okay better better way to put it is if you're doing this on geological times period your puzzle pieces will actively change and occasionally they oh, will what? multiply Oh, that's true. Oh, that man. sounds like a headache. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I could never do it. I just like I just like taking the knowledge that they have already compiled so nicely together for all of us and talking about that rather than trying to figure out any of this knowledge on my own <laughs> so that's why even though i'm a very much a hardcore fan dinosaurs i still kind of consider myself a casual because i'm not a professional and i'm not a scientist yeah so i'm just a very hardcore casual fan of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals so <laughs> still say one of the things um, you should have on your bucket list is actually go participate in a dinosaur dig that sounds like hell. <laughs> Going out in the middle of the Badlands, like where there's no Taco Bell in sight. It's out in the hot sun. You gotta operate heavy machinery. Actually, I would really doubt the heavy machinery. It's probably more like you lay on your stomach with a brush or like a toothbrush and yeah. a little tiny the rock hammer and very patiently right. work on something. Well, because, like, one of the whales, which I've done an episode on uh, earlier, Perucetus, it took so long to get those vertebrae out, like, years and years and years of constant work. So imagine, like, the 9 to 5 workday of those paleontologists, it's like, okay, we're going to, for 9 to 5, we're going to get a very tiny bit of one this vertebrae. One centimeter of this out, vertebrae. Out of the explodes. cliff. Yeah, that's, yeah, no thank you. Wait, uh, actually, only I was I'd thinking like, maybe they would, it's less of pulling it out of the cliff and more of gonna have to double check this but maybe they pull big rock out of the cliff then they put it in a lab and someone sits at a desk and they're like wait a minute there's something in here well yeah, they know so. there's something in there because they have it exposed but right to carve out the entire bone you could yeah you could probably sit on a desk with your rock and your plink 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 scrub 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 yep. plink plink yep. plink no scrub, no it makes scrub, sense scrub. a lot of the work is done in museums for sure like yeah. it's like it doesn't necessarily when i say like oh it's out in the hot sun it's not really out in the hot sun constantly yeah. there's a lot of excavation out there but then once it's when it's excavated out here and then the real meticulous work is done in a nice air conditioned lab so like oh, yeah <laughs> All right. So, anyways, uh, size amulet says is three feet slash uh, uh, it's, it's, sorry, ten feet slash three meters long, five hundred fifty to uh, eleven hundred pounds, two hundred fifty to five hundred kilograms. Uh, it was a carnivore. Uh, time early Eocene, forty eight to forty seven million years ago. Location Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Uh, like very much like Pakistan, that seems to be where the whales originated from. Yep. It was described in 1994. Pop culture parrot says walking with beasts is probably its most famous depiction. All even though even though they had to swim all the way to Germany for some reason, that guy must have been really really lost. Wait, <laughs> so. they have it uh, take place in Germany? Because like yeah, because like that episode does not because sort of like how in the last episode we were talking about um, where this formation doesn't seem to have a lot in it. They're like, okay, so we're going to have this episode take place not in Pakistan because there's not a lot of animals in it, but in the German, like, flats and, like, the German clay pits, whatever, where there's actually a lot of creatures. And we're just going to say this creature is, like, swam up river, a, a river, a newcomer, so we could feature it somehow. Dang. Because there's the way around Okay, sorry, it. I'm just so, I'm just stunned at the idea of that kind of travel. It's like, that yeah, kind of migration, I'd expect out of birds, not a swimmer. <laughs> Though. That's why I say it was lost. It kept like changing the rivers. kept It kept taking the wrong turn on the rivers and ended up getting all the way over there. <laughs> so. Must have been like Bugs Bunny took the wrong turn. At yeah, took a wrong turn. At not Albuquerque, Albuquerque, but Istanbul. I guess at this point, 
Well, I guess it was before uh, 19, the 1930s when they changed it to... So it would have been Constantinople, of course. <laughs> yeah. But dang, I'd be lost. But they did actually, yes, have it occur up here in uh, Walking with Beasts. Though... Yes. Uh, I do believe and, you had some disagreements on its uh, behavior, where that thing was basically a... Pretty much like a crocodile hunting wildebeest. It was wildebeest a mammalian Nile. crocodile... Yeah, where it would basically sit we in the water. We think it might have been it might have been better at like hunting fish and other yeah. sort of aquatic creatures. So, particularly if, as we get into later, it wasn't really good at like using its feet, anyways. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, it also was in the PBS documentary. It was previously shown as a skeleton in the PBS documentary Great Transformations. But those are its two major uh, pop culture appearances. So, well, were these? Yeah, I'm sorry, says, I'm, I'm like. This is the first time I've ever heard of these. Uh, I, I go to another website called Dinopedia that often has a really good list of... When you look up an animal, it's like it, has, it usually has a pretty good list of whatever pop culture uh, something appears in. And it's pretty... Sometimes it gets some pretty weird examples. So, Wow. Of course, there is one you forgot to mention. Uh, what? Of, uh, uh, Jurassic what, what I forget Park to mention. the Game. Oh, that's right, of course. I mean, even though I don't think it's in Jurassic Park of the Game, but they're all in Jurassic Park of the Game, so it's in Jurassic Park of the Game. They are. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, but yeah, Ambulocetus, it means walking whale. But if we think it walked, it might have been more like a sea lion, and sea lions barely walk when they're on land. Well, like, sea lions walk. It's seals that are just like, yeah, you're a couple of limbs short of being a slug. Thank you very much. That's true. A very big, noisy slug. There are, 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 are. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite part of uh, Banjo Kazooie when you go with the walrus guy and the little he's like, ar, 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 yeah. ar. <laughs> so that play? is actually a very, that's a fairly debated topic because it's very much how much could this guy actually walk? Because contrary to poli- belief, it, well, it, it may not have well. actually have walked a lot. Walked. <laughs> However, it does talk about it perhaps swam less like a what you would consider as a whale where it's big tail flute go up down in the water and instead would well, have like, used its uh feet as its propul- well it's like it's propulsion. still it's still its back is going up is undulating up and down but it's not just the tail fluke because i don't think it had a tail fluke no it, it, it used its it used it kicked and it used its uh tail like that so it still did the same sort of motion but just had the addition of limbs instead yeah. of a tail fluke yeah so also it's kind of funny so the full scientific name of this thing is ambulocetus natans natans means swimming so it, the full name is walking swimming whale <laughs> well you got that right <laughs> and again definitely a carnivore you take one look at any of the reconstructions of uh, look at those teeth man ambulocetus's teeth and mean looking teeth yeah it's got those so- big thick Sort of con- conical big teeth. conical teeth. Conical, that's the word. Long, yes. long jaw. First thing I think of is this thing is probably less. Uh, I don't know. It could potentially, if it was opportunistically, ambush uh, prey because it does have carnisials in the back of its jaw. You know the kind yes. of the carnivore molar analog sort of thing. I'm probably sure there's someone yeah. who's going to lecture me about it, but it's the closest <laughs> we can have to... You're not getting this right. Pale, pale but it's not getting it right. information right. How dare it? Yeah, <laughs> but long teeth. They do... Yeah, long, short of sharp... Long, sharp teeth. Semi-conical, semi- curved. Does have carnisial, so... Uh, interestingly, too, uh, most modern tooth whales only have one type of tooth, uh, but... Uh, I almost see this had a had a few different types, sort of like more more other animal, mammals. So more they're, heter, they're heterodonts rather than homodonts. So um, uh, they still had the canines and rather than um, and they still had the premolars. So, but like if you look at like other whales, like if you look at like a um, a sperm whale, for instance, it only has not only does it only have the same sort of teeth all throughout its jaw, it only has its teeth in the lower jaw. Yeah, so. but considering the fact that that sucker goes after giant squid, squid and they're not exactly known giant. for their Bones or yeah, I, I could. Things. I feel like I could chew on a squid. <laughs> yeah, my advice for that is go find a bouncy ball and start chewing on it. That's the best way to describe it. I'll just it. have some calamari instead. <laughs> yeah, but they're very going to be very rubber. But yes, this thing uh-huh. probably had both. I would say. I mean, trying to yeah. say that something only ate fish. Oh no! Like animals are opportunists. Animals like, are opportunists. Also, even. 
even off, even to the point of like saying, oh, animals are herbivores and carnivores. There have been <laughs> reports of like deer, like not necessarily killing, but when there's a carcass, they'll like lick the blood a bit yeah. just to get some iron. Or yeah, some, they will. Like, they will eat some of the carcass. Not too much. It's not their predominant thing. Yeah. But yeah, deer will gnaw on a carcass if it's available. Mm-hmm. So, Speaking yeah. of deer and whales, do you know that the orca is one of the biggest, was the most prominent predators of the moose? <laughs> Have these orcas learned to fly? Now that's a terrifying thought. No, in Alaska. <laughs> so there are parts where uh, in Alaska the moose would cross from island to island. And they'd go in the ocean. And moose are actually amazing swimmers. Not only can they swim just up the top, they can also swim deep. Wait, like diving? Like, yeah, they dive. <laughs> Whoa. So they swim from island to island that way, and occasionally some of them get picked off by orcas. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the most what's the yeah, what's the biggest predator of the moose? Is it wolf? Is it a bear? No, it's an orca. <laughs> One thing you would never expect. So, yeah, I could totally imagine the Ambulocetus going after fish. Mm-hmm. Pretend also going, going after, after fish, going after, like, lizards, like sea lizards, or, like, or not lizards, just swimming lizards or crocodiles. Maybe smaller crocodilians. Smaller crocodilians. Like, uh, um, mammals. Anything that, just, that was trying to swim across. Small mammals at the, like, at the shoreline. Yeah. So we talked about how the... The uh, Pachycetus had its eyes on the top, but its nose on the front. Have, has did the Ambulocetus's nostrils get to the top of its head by this point? Uh, let me check. Hold on. It looks like the, it, the eyes were definitely still close to the top, uh, but um, the end of the holotype snout is missing. So oh gosh, uh, it's unclear actually how long it would be. If you look at like the picture there on the on the thing, you see that well part of it is red and yellow. That's the part they filled in. Oh boy. So they're See that guessing. skull picture on the... Yeah. Still doesn't uh, detract from big teeth. Big, no, it definitely has big teeth. teeth. Yeah, so... so uh, But I'm assuming, yeah, based on where we can find the nostril, that, that they were, they were starting to get further downward, so... Further up on uh, top, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so... Yeah, further up or on top. I mean, yeah, that's right, yeah. Further, further on top, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and... That, that was one of the transitions with it. And like you said, it swam kind of like an otter, um... In walking with beasts, it like like I said, it, it, my main problem is that it hunts like a crocodile. But also, it like it's in it's in Germany, and then it dies. Like there's a big uh, gas cloud, and everything dies except for a few leptic tidium. So it's like, yeah, you definitely took a wrong turn in Albuquerque, <laughs> or yeah. or it took a wrong turn in Constantinople. I am able to see this, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, considering um, the fact that they later became, you know, uh, the whales, it couldn't have been that bad of a thing. That bad. Oh no, for sure. Oh no. To be fair, also, what's interesting about Ambulocetus is that it really is a transitionary fossil, and that for the longest time we had known Apacocetus for a little bit, and we had known of, um, and we had known, uh, or at least animals like Apacocetus for a little bit, and we had known about Basilocetus, like those, or Basilosaurus, 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 (laughs) Basilosaurus. We knew about that one for a while, but we never knew the middle one. We always we knew that whales came from land, yeah. and we had some of the early w- land whales, but we never had any semi-aquatic ones until Ambulocetus. Yeah, so. yeah. So this is very much a. <sighs> I was about a good, to say Archaeopteryx, like that puzzle but I'm piece. like, I thought you would get after me that for that because Archaeopteryx was nothing more than a. Because is Arch- isn't Archaeopteryx a branch, a kind of, uh, not branch. It's not a bird. It's it, it's 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 not really a drum. It's kind of. It's kind of its own thing, okay. <laughs> but it's not really related to birds, like, because uh, like it, like the birds evolved later. Like uh, Archaeopteryx is just a, a really good transitionary fossil. Uh, it and like I don't think it's a, it's it's part of the Paravies clade, which uh, originally in the Middle Jurassic, and it also includes Dromaeosaurs and uh, and um, Truodontids and Scansoroterygids, which are the ones like Yichi. Um but yeah, over... so not really related to like, birds. It's not. It's 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 weird because it's far earlier than all the ones from China, and it's also from a far different place. So hmm. it's it's yeah. Convergent like there's only two. Then? What convergent evolution then? 
Oh yeah, for sure. Well, like a mammal, like again, like Yi Chi. That was the one that was like a bird, except it was a bat. It was a bat dinosaur. Okay, you said that name, and Did I'm not like, of Yi Chi. No, I had no idea. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to send you a link on the Discord, and, and you will have your life thoroughly changed. That <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Hold on. In the chat, ye dinosaur. Okay. But yeah. Particularly, look at this picture. Whoa, that is bat-like. Yeah, like that. you see the life restoration by Illamy, uh, Emily Willoughby? Yeah. Yeah, look at that thing. Imagine the alternate world where those things are the things that evolved to birds, and we all have little dragon things <laughs> instead of oh, birds. That would be cool, but let's talk more about the sea dragon. Yes, of course, the sea dragon, uh, <laughs> as in, and not the sea horse relative. Uh, but, no, so, but basically so. the Ambolo, Ambolocetus, the uh -huh. king whale. Um, Yes. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what else is there. Because, again, this is Paleo Bites. There's a lot to talk about we could talk about here. But this is Paleo Bites. You know, it's not Paleo five-course meal. Yeah, so. yeah. Like, we talked about, we talked about like, you know, the fact how it swam. We talked about how it might have been on land only a, a bit, even though it was said it was walking. Um, it's possible, they say, that it might have uh, hunted uh, large mammals uh, that approached the horse water's edge. Uh, including some of the early manatees, like Cyrenians, like Pezozyron, which is a creature that, like, I... Although not Pesos, because that one's from Jamaica, but that's from um, that kind of area here. Uh, but huh. yeah, so it yeah, it's, it's, I think we pretty much covered everything else that we can say. Like if we want to not go into really deep, big detail about like different limbs and like the ribs and vertebrae and the so yeah. and like you know, of like the the origins of, like how it fits in with the rest of it. I think we I think we've covered yeah. it. So if you want to learn more, very listeners, very, go to very... Ambulocetus on Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of little more boring things. Of course, we're missing the top, the tip of the nose, which is kind of important for those sorts of things. Rather good size, too. Um, yeah. What was you said? It was like 300 kilos, 600 pounds. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, like maybe it'll be even like something like upwards of 1,000 pounds or oh, 500 wow. kilos. So Probably the really so, yeah. big ones. Hmm. So, how many uh, specimens yeah. have, they, have they found of this? Because if you're if you're missing, they've only found the one. I think there's only the one. Uh, it's just the one holotype. Um, oh gosh, really so, important. But there's only one. Oh wait, never mind. They found uh, they found some ones uh, like a premolar uh, and some portions of a femur for excavation. Uh, oh wait, never mind. This is wait. This is the holotype. Okay, never mind. I, I'm, okay, so this is also the holotype. Yeah. Yes, they've only seemed to have found the holotype. And it's a, from a single specimen, so is what we know of. Oh, boy. They have found 80% of the skeleton as a whole, though. Yeah. So we have a good idea so, of what it looked like. Kind of a a very large, very, very carnivorous otter. Though one thing I can say that very much contrasts the otter to Ambulocetus is jaw length. Otters, yeah, otters have nice, cute little jaws. Little, because they 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 eat urchins and clams. Like yeah. they, they got kind of short really noses. Whereas the the entire cetus evolution tends to be focused on long noses, long not noses, but long kind of jaws and long snouts, snouts sort yeah, of thing. Like, well, like that seems to be common with uh with uh aquatic and semi aquatic animals in general. It's like you've got crocodiles and spinosaurids. Mm -hmm. Beaked whales, yeah. something about those long jaws, ichthyosaurs. Yeah, something about those long jaws makes makes you makes them aquatic. Yeah. Or aqu something about well, actually the other way around. Something about being aquatic makes, makes a long you jaw have long really jaws. A good advantageous thing, probably to do to extra reach. It's uh yes, oh yeah, for sure, and like snatching up fish, that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. You might have. Uh, I'm give it. Ambulo sorry, Ambulocetus probably had a. Okay, this is an idea, but they're like, okay, compare the yes. teeth on Amblocetus versus, say, the Mesozoic marine reptiles means it may have had like some Mesosaur. a pretty broad opportunity to diet, uh, broad uh, diet. Oh yeah, for sure. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like, well, the Mosasaurus had very had teeth that were like they had some teeth in the throat too, as well as on the on the um on the uh, sides of the jaw. So that, that poor babysitter in Jurassic World got crunched on pretty hard, not yeah. just by the jaw. But I was going to mention that too. whole scene where it actually showed <laughs> the second what looked like row of teeth in the back of the jaw. 
Yeah. So thankfully this didn't have that, but it was like no. its own kind of own specialist. Sort own of thing. specialist yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, rating it 1 to 65 million, I'm going to give this like a 63 or 4 million. I think it's really, really cool. It is really cool. But again, back with the Pachycetus, this Amblocetus is very much a. We're not actually staying here for very long, especially given that we haven't found a whole bunch of them. Sounds like this was very much a transition from the oh, yeah, land sure. dwellers to, hey, this ocean stuff is pretty, this water stuff is pretty sweet. Though, again, yeah. this one is probably more river-based. So Yes. Very much so. All so right. Probably not the... Does not have enough room to grow into the giants that they were, though it is bigger than. No, Pachycetus. no, no, because it was more river based for sure. Yeah, but we'll save that for another time. Another time. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show and contact me personally, you can contact me personally at MatthewDodsCreator.com on Facebook and Matthew Dodds sixty four. Matthew Dodds Creator on Facebook and Matthew Dodds sixty four on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere else. If you want to contact the show, it's PaleoBytesPodcast at gmail dot com. PaleoBytesPod on Twitter and PaleoBytesPodcast on Instagram. Um, I have a book series on Amazon Megazog, available for print and Kindle. Uh, no. And we'll see this once more too early. Or too late. The, the book was too early. And you'll see this was too late. And we'll so, see this. Far too late. Far too late. Far too late. Oh, no. About 20 million years. <laughs> 20 million years. <laughs> so That does give yeah. the idea of just how fast mammals decided oh, to yeah, for sure. invade the water. Uh, just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Let's say the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. Once more. If you want to contact me, just get a hold of Matthew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am... I'll, I'll relay whatever D&D questions you have. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right bye. bye.